Good day all. I hope you are safe and sound. Today is my lecture number 37. Under my banner of Marine Quest Solutions. As you know, for past more than two and a half years, I have been uploading all these things based on my practical and pragmatic experience on ship handling, hydrodynamics, and even STS operations. For today, like in past, I have imparted few of the case study. Today also, I am going to impart a case study with my old followers. Today's lecture number is lecture number 37. Today's scenario is regarding the collision which took place between two vessels in Dover Strait way back in year 2017. We are going to talk about the few things, of course, as we speak. None of us uh, can uh, pass a verdict on any of these things, but this is to be taken as a part of the learning curve. So we begin now with lecture number 37 on the case study. Please do like and subscribe my YouTube channel under the banner of Marine Quest Solutions. Thank you. The case study of the collision between two Hong Kong registered vessels as we speak has been depicted over here and the date was 1st of July 2017 at 0304 hours Zulu. The collision occurred between two vessels. One was the bulk carrier MV Huyang Endeavour and the nationality of all the personnel on board were Chinese. The other vessel was an oil tanker, empty Sea Frontier, and she had a laden, uh, she was loaded and had a cargo of gasoline, which was accounting to 37,944 metric tons. The few things which we'll be talking about right now, I'm just going to highlight the salient things for us to understand as we pass on the slides. In this particular case, from on oil tanker Sea Frontier from the time the vessel departed Antwerp, the master had not rested for 14 hours. This is all, all as per the MAIB report. The location was Dover Straits, approximately five nautical miles to the west of Sandy Banks. Extent of damage was both vessels sustained damage and, and but were able to proceed to the nearby ports for the damage assessment. So the good thing was there was no loss of life and or casualty as far as the uh, people on board were concerned and there was no pollution. Hence there was no injury to any personnel on board both the vessels and there was no pollution or any environmental damage. The crux of the matter which had been actually uh, brought out in the MAIB report was the conflicting communication between both the vessels and of course goes with the situational awareness and of course devoid of and or non confirmance of rules of road and of course lacking the practical knowledge of seamanship which is must in today's era where we have all the electronic gadgets be it AIS, AIS, radars of course have been there for quite some time but but the main thing is that it's basically as I said in my uh, previous lectures also it's man and machine interface how can we optimize all those things into our advantage that is something which we need to see and the points to be pondered and that is something which we need to take back home when I talk about the practical knowledge of seamanship. Moving on to the next slide, the vessel's particulars have been depicted over here. This uh, Huyong Endeavour was a uh, Hong, again, Hong Kong registered ship with Chinese classification society, a bulk carrier, 
uh, year of belt was 2013 and length overall was 224 meters and the gross tonnage was 41605 tons. I will just you know take the uh, salient important things otherwise the particulars are here in front of you you can you can see whenever you wish to the sea frontier oil tanker which was carrying a gasoline uh, of uh, 37944 metric tons approximately was also hong kong registered uh, classification society was dnbgl and uh, she was an oil tanker and uh, 183.3 meters uh, length, mid size product carrier, and uh, she was classed to carry Annex 1 cargo, crude products, etc. Following this, uh, its internal in investigation, Huang Maritime Center, the manager of the Huang Endeavor, has amended its procedure because what happened once this thing happened, then of course uh, the whole hell broke loose. And both the companies had uh, carried out, uh, uh, had amended their procedures as well as the safety of navigations or bridge procedures or prudence to be exercised uh, towards the safety of navigation and or the due diligence which shall be carried out by the master and the officers respectively. Here it is the depicted picture of uh, both the vessels on top it's Huang. Huyang Endeavor and uh, below is the Sea Frontier, the product carrier. Now let's start looking at the scenario, what had happened that this, as you can see my uh, cursor over here, the vessel Huyang Endeavor whose course has been depicted with the red line, the coastline, she was coming on a southwesterly course and that's where the other vessel, Sea Frontier, was joining the lane. This is all in Dover Straits. So, Huang Endeavour at that point of time, 0200 hours UTC, was heading on a course of 225.6, and Sea Frontier at 0200 hours when she was joining the lane was heading towards a course of 255.2 at the same time at 0200 hours. Looking at the further thing, uh, now what happened? Once the Huyong Endeavour, which was proceeding, as I go back to my uh, previous slide, on a course of 225.6, and uh, the other vessel, Sea Frontier, was joining the lane, and this is how it was, the path was. The first path, as depicted on from the cursor point of view, is uh, the Huyong Endeavour, the red line course is Huyong Endeavour, and the other vessel, uh, Sea Frontier, her coastline is depicted over here. Ahead of Sea Frontier, there was another vessel, which we'll see, because what had happened that there was one vessel which was ahead of Sea Frontier, and Huang Endeavour was supposed to have been overtaking the Sea Frontier on her starboard side. There had been lots of communication between both the vessels, as we can see here, that at 0253 hours, Huang Endeavour, second officer, hailed the Sea Frontier on VHF channel 16 following transcript as a result of the conversation which was held in English. So I am not going to read the whole thing. You can see like what all things have taken place or transpired. You see sometimes what happens that when we are carrying out too much communication over the VHF, okay VHF is certainly is a boon of course it's a it's a it's a it's a plus point to have definitely when we are communicating with the VHF. But the main thing what we must understand is the other party, the vessel with whom we are communicating, is she or the officer on board? Are they understanding clearly? Are we at same level? Are we on same page? And once the communication is done, the act action shall be executed in concurrence and confirmation a confirmation to the VHF communication which was carried out. In this particular case, one point which has been highlighted is the lack of situational awareness. Number two, too much of VHF communication and with very little or no execution on the subject matter which had been discussed over the VHF. So, 
in during this communication the vessel c frontier also raised the coast guard the kutuva coast guard and appraised him of the situation now actual thing was that what was happening that c frontier was on a southwesterly coast that is over here that this position is here at 0304 where these two vessels collided just now what had actually happened there was a vessel named donna express 2 there was a vessel named donna express 2 which was ahead of sea frontier and when sea frontier realized that the distance between the donna express 2 and the sea frontier is reducing at the same time the huang endeavor which was behind the sea frontier which is his her coastline has been depicted in red color was behind her there was no warning given to the huang endeavor by the sea frontier that i'm reducing my speed because i've got another vessel ahead of me and she's closing in because i am also in an overtaking situation with donna express 2 this communication was not related to the vessel behind uh that is huang endeavor as a caution so what happened when sea frontier reduced her speed and her distance between the sea frontier and donna express started started increasing that was good as you can see in the previous slide the this line this was for donna express as it is marked over here she was being overtaken at one point of time by sea frontier but when sea frontier realized that <coughs> the distance is closing in she reduced her speed at the same time sea frontier and huang ex uh, huang express uh, endeavor were in communication that huang endeavor asked sea frontier that i intend to overtake you on the starboard side sea frontier said that please go more to starboard before you overtake because i have got another vessel named donna express to aid of me but when huang express probably did not do that though there was sufficient sea room as far as the water water depths are concerned he was still adamant to overtake uh sea frontier at a closer range when sea frontier reduced her speed to increase the cpa between the donna express and hasel the vessel behind the overtaking vessel that is wong express did not notice because of situational awareness and there was no prompt or a little warning was given to the don uh, to uh, to the wong uh, endeavor by sea frontier now this is what is the situation now i will read this uh, thing uh, which i have uh, captured from the mai b report at 0250 wong endeavor also entered caldo uh, caldo rep the dover rep reporting area and this time the second officer report was accepted by the dover coast guard watch officer all the same uh, at the same time now let's uh, the thing which i have highlighted in red or underlined in red at this point of time sea frontier master saw that donna express 2 was directly ahead of him and he could see the stern light and the port side light of the general cargo ship and also determined that the smaller vessel was crossing ahead of the sea frontier <coughs> so it was overtaking at a crossing situation so to allow more time for the smallest vessel to cross ahead of the bow in other words the, the sea frontier ordered her coast a little bit more to starboard to give her room because it was a kind of a close quarter situation developing he could see the stern light first then because the speed of the sea frontier was more it was overtaking come crossing situation this is how it was materializing to to give more cpa to donna express 2 the sea frontier reduced her speed and altered her course a little bit more to stop mind you at that point of time huang express was behind the sea frontier 
So reading the whole thing, see Frontier Master saw Dharma Express 2 was directly ahead of him. He could see the stern light and port side light of the general cargo ship and also determined that a smaller vessel was crossing ahead of the sea frontier to allow more time for the smaller vessel to cross ahead sea frontier master set the engine telegraph to half ahead and the Donna Express CPA started opening or increasing to 0 0.6 nautical mile. Now as what I have written the above action from sea frontier in return reduce the distance between Huang and Deva. As what we said earlier, that the master of the sea frontier should have given some cautionary prompt to the Huang Express. And Huang Express, in return, the master on bridge on Huang Express, his situational awareness was not very proactive. He was not well aware of what is happening because what happens? A thumb rule. Whenever you are uh, navigating in the TSS, besides keeping a watch on the vessel which is overtaking you, you must also keep a watch on the vessel ahead of you. Maybe there's a vessel, uh, the vessel which is ahead of you at this point of time had overtaken, agreed. It does not mean that she may not reduce her speed. If she all of a sudden reduces her speed or she has a problem with the main engine or steering and you as a duty officer are not aware as far as uh, situational awareness is concerned. We can very well imagine what can happen okay, in a close quarter situation. The similar kind of scenario happened in this particular case. When Sea Frontier realized that the distance between Donna Express 2 and herself is reducing, she reduced the speed. Whereas Wong Express Master was under impression that she is on a constant speed. He did not take a full appraisal of the situation. And then what happened? In return, the distance between Sea Frontier Express, uh, Sea Frontier, and uh, and the uh, Wong uh, Endeavour started reducing. So the action, the above action, which was taken by the Sea Frontier Master from Sea Frontier, in return, reduced the distance from the Huang Endeavour and a close quarter situation was developing at all time between Huang Endeavour and the Sea Frontier. So as we can see, the condition over here, this is the Huang Endeavour in red, in blue it is Sea Frontier and Donna Express, she is already you know crossed ahead of the Sea Frontier for which Sea Frontier also had altered her course a little bit to stop it and reduce her speed. At that point of time, what had happened? Because Huang Express did not reduce her speed, uh, Huang Endeavour, sorry, my apology, Huang Endeavour did not reduce her speed. Sea Frontier had reduced her speed. The distance started closing between both the vessels. And in nick of time, see what happens. When the sea frontier realized that the distance is still close enough between the Donna Express and herself, at the same time, the Huang Endeavour was closing in on her starboard side without giving any notification of prompt to the vessel astern of sea frontier. The sea frontier master altered his course to port. Now, when Sea Frontier Master altered his course to port, the Huang Endeavour, because he was also closing in with Sea Frontier, did not have enough sea room. Instead of going to starboard, because what had happened initially, Sea Frontier altered her course a little bit to starboard without giving a prompt to Huang Endeavour. So, so Huang Endeavour was under impression that, okay, Sea Frontier has a vessel ahead of her which is crossing, she may go to starboard. To keep clear of her, the master of Huang uh, Endeavour also altered the course to port. Excuse me. The master of Huang Endeavour also altered the course to port. Whereas Sea Frontier, 
realized that okay Wang Endeavor is not going to give him enough seafood. So he also, Sea Frontier also ordered her ghost to port without realizing that there's a vessel behind him which is already coming onto a port quarter because Wong and Never was already had started ordering her course to port. So in this kind of situation, what happened? This is the coastline of uh, Wong and Never. She was supposed to have uh, overtaken the sea frontier on her starboard side, but because of this fiasco, Wong and Never altered her course to port, and at the same time, or maybe sometime later. Sea Frontier also ordered her course to port and they had this collision. When we talk about the root cause analysis, the root causes which could have led towards this incident or accident, number one, the fatigue master, as what we said earlier, master was fatigued. He had been overworked for more than 14 hours as per his work and rest records, as per the investigation report. The vessel Sea Frontier had an extra officer. He could have been deployed on the bridge because he was an extra licensed officer, certified officer. He was not kept on the bridge or the bridge watch level 3 was not. No additional lookouts also were maintained. The second thing is non-coordination of the actions with respect to the VHF communication as what I said earlier in the beginning of the lecture. If we are carrying out the VHF communication, okay, but at the same time, what action we are supposed to take, we must execute and also monitor the action which has been taken by the, uh, which has been taken by the, uh, by the target or the other vessel which is monitoring her by uh, all available means. The other thing where Sea Frontier was, you know, accountable for fault was that she altered her course to port without even any assessment of available sea room onto her port side. In other words, what I said, the Sea Frontier should have called up the Huang Endeavor and, you know, discussed or explained him. Uh, the master of Huang and her, her intentions. There was no communication when actually it was required. The, the, the you know, the cutting, uh, I'm not trying to cut a satire, but the, the, the thing was that when actually they were supposed to have communicated or coordinated on the VA or the VHF, there was no communication. When the time was, you know, in the nick of the time, C Frontier would have given a prompt to the Huang Endeavor before reducing the speed or and or if he had uh, intention to alter her course to port. In that case, Huang Endeavor would have realized fine, she will maintain her course and speed and pass very well clear of the uh, sea frontier because she, uh, sea frontier was supposed uh, to alter her course. So, the main thing, uh, the other thing what we discussed without any assessment, the sea frontier altered her course to port without realizing that Huang Endeavor is also ordering course to her port side and they will be again in a close quarter situation. From Huang Endeavor point of view, the lack of situational awareness, as what I said, whenever you are in overtaking situation and in particular in the TSS, always keep a check on the vessel ahead of her. Maybe she has overtaken you about half an hour ago or one hour ago, but who knows, maybe she has reduced her speed for her own uh, some concern or she may have engine problem or she may have some steering problem. It is not to be construed that the vessel which is overtaken because she is finally passed and cleared. If a vessel which is overtaken you as per rule number 13, the vessel which is overtaking another vessel is uh, obligated to keep clear of the vessel being overtaken until such time she is finally passed and cleared. Now in a situation where a vessel which has already overtaken you and she is finally passed and clear, is ahead of you. And she is doing more speed than you and she is already passing clear. But at any point of time, and this is particular in, in TSS, be very cautious. Suppose she has a problem with her engine or she has to adjust her ETA for which she has reduced the speed. Be very careful and it is advisable if suppose you are an overtaking vessel, you have overtaken a vessel which is finally passed and clear and for some reason you are reducing the speed. 
please do keep the vessel behind you well appraised that you are you have reduced the speed and now the vessel which you had overtaken may perhaps come into an overtaking situation to overtake you so these things are very important and that's where the vhf communication shall be used precise distinctively and to the point at the same time once the vhf communication has completed or concluded the timely action with respect to that particular communication shall be executed and the monitoring of that action by your vessel and other vessels shall be always catered to so you can endeavor lack of situation awareness and no optimization of usage of navigates when i say no optimization of usage of navigates because she was not monitoring her visually or by radar or by her navigational aids in case the sea frontier had reduced us and of course the miscommunication which we were already talking about now besides that as what i depicted in my beginning of this uh, lecture that uh, the lack of practical knowledge of seamanship that has to be taken into account other thing which constituted towards this fiasco were the devoid of or non compliance of rr white rule number 6 safe speed rule number 7 risk of collision rule number 10 the tss rules as what i said when you are uh, navigating in tss please be cautious in all any of these situation crossing overtaking any of these situation please be cautious then comes rule number 13 overtaking of course we have talked about it and rule number 34 that is no warning uh, warning and uh, no uh, maneuvering and warning signals were not used or exercised when the vessel is altering course to port two short blast to starboard one short blast or operating in stern propulsion three short blast all these things none of the maneuvering and warning signals were used or exercised so ladies and gentlemen in a nutshell i will be imparting these lectures over more and more my next set of lecture i will be imparting would be on the psc the high risk observations which construe or which culminate towards the psc detentions that's what i will be broadcasting in my next uh, lecture number 38 so keep watching my channel please do like and subscribe now last but not the least looking at the accident situation it's something like when you look at it it seems like that both the ships have something you know like double back this is the the actual uh, the pictures of both the vessel that is the huang endeavor and the sea frontier after collision and the good thing was that there was no human injury and there was no loss of life there was no loss to the environment thank you and good day and god bless